What if you could make change easier? Is that even possible? Well, I dare say it is possible. And why am I saying so? Well, because I am going to do the second time of something, in this case called GHVC, and I've noticed that whereas the first time it was huge overwhelm, this time it's already easier because I can look back on things that I haven't received for this time yet, but I did receive for the last time. So, yes, things can be easier. Now, having said so, I just wrote down all the changes that I've been going through this last week and a half, and I can tell you it's a lot. I mean, it varies from my car giving me problems to clients being ill, to having training two days, other training as well in the evening, uh, actually two trainings at the same time. Then I had my own influence challenge that was not this weekend but the weekend prior <laughs> and I was just going through it new neighbors um new times for the supermarket there was liberation day and memorial memorial day which also changed a lot of things so there were a lot of things going on and um I've been reading a new book that I got. I'm still reading the other book. So a lot of input, a lot of input. Now, one of the things that I am reading about has to do with overwhelm, sensory input, especially for people who are neurodivergent. So sometimes you say it's for people on the spectrum. So apparently when we talk about on the spectrum, we mean that you have certain symptoms that other people do too. So we do not want to label people, even though I use the term neurodivergent. But basically what I'm saying is, hey, I'm a little bit different when it comes to processing things. <laughs> so it might take me a little bit longer <laughs> before I actually understand what you're talking about. And that's one of the reasons why I teach people to speak up, speak out and share their story. Because I'm not the only one who has trouble understanding what you are asking me. And more precisely, what exactly do you want from me? And, well, since I have come to understand how that works on my end, or more importantly, how it doesn't work on my end because it doesn't come across the first time around, I've learned to get back at it again and again and again and again until both parties, so me and the other one involved, actually understand one another. So that's good. And, well, knowing about this, I'm now also... Uh, teaching others and supporting others in being heard, seen, understood, valued, respected, you name it. Uh, uh, with the goal, of course, of, hey, I'm here. Hello. Are you aware that I'm here? <laughs> and um, please listen to me, because when I'm talking to you, I'm trying to convey a message to you. Well, we won't say that literally. But you know what I mean, right? And if you don't, then just look at it. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to get your attention because I do believe that it's important that when you have no clue what the other person is talking about or you're like, oh, they'll probably get it, then maybe consider that they don't. So, going over all the things from last week, so much, so much has been going through my mind. I, I've talked about it a number of times when it came to change, especially the, the neighbors had a big impact on me because they have a huge sound system and I don't know what to expect and I noticed that triggered me. I don't want to be triggered. I want to be calm and at ease. And well, today I was going through everything from not only this week. And like I said, a lot happened this week, not just the neighbors, but the training and everything. And then of course, reading the books. Don't 
don't take for granted what's in those books. I mean, reading new stuff can have such an immense impact on your brain and processing all the information can actually make you be very tired and hence sleepy. Now, nothing wrong with being sleepy unless you're in the car driving, of course, and we don't want to be talking to other people and then. <laughs> I know it all too well. So today I, um, I've been working on primarily my Monday motivational messages. And actually I'm going to talk about it tomorrow a little bit more. And that's the thing. I was already totally hyped like, oh, I'm going to be ahead of time for the Monday motivational messages. And then I was like, but oh, hang on. I still have today's post for Instagram and I was like, ah, but what? And I was like, well, I'm just going to go back and talk about all the changes that I've experienced. But the main thing was when it came to doing things for the second time around, and some of those things aren't even the second time around, but more the third or the fourth time, it was actually nice to go through there and like, I know this, I know that. Okay, yeah, this, oh, well, this is new. Oh, this is funny. And it was so nice to be able to go through it on my own pace instead of, okay, so now we go from this topic to the next one to the next one. And then, you know, afterwards it's such an overwhelm that I don't get back to it anymore. <laughs> That's usually how it works. And now because we are going to do it again i'm more inclined to say okay well look, let's go take a look at it and see what i can do in order to already get back in the game again now the good news is the training i'll be having in the next four days thpc training is not something that i stopped doing i've had training i don't know at least since last summer like every week and then i have my own personal chpc coach she's a champ she really is so there are a lot of things that i've come to see and to understand ever since i went to the coaching summit in austin last year i also noticed that you know, I'm experimenting with the frameworks out there. I'm experimenting with, with the courses. There's a lot of experimenting going on. Talk about changes. Um, but you know, it's when you actually do it. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? That you fail at succeeding? So what? Then you do it again. And then again and again and again. And at some point you will succeed. I mean, each time you'll get better at things. But if you don't do it, you'll never improve. So I, I guess the good thing about change is that if you are dedicated to succeeding, you know your why, then sure enough, you'll get there. And like I said, when the first time is like, oh my God, what is this? Pure overwhelm. Then realize that the second time around won't have to be that bad. More precisely, you'll probably know about it. So I'm way more prepared. I already printed some stuff. I'm aware that I might get some new seats tomorrow. And I actually do have a folder that they already sent here, a big ordinar. Uh, I have no clue where it is. So that's one of the things that I've been working on as well. Um, I'm literally picking up one piece at a time, looking at it. Okay, I can throw it away, old paper. Oh, this needs to be put in that drawer. Just going through it all. And, you know, the most, the most surprising thing for me this year, and it's about something totally different, is it's three years ago now that my mom passed away so it's four years ago that we got to celebrate her birthday which means it's 
13 years ago since we got to celebrate my dad's last birthday. So they usually did it on the same day, May 5th, because that used to be a national holiday where everybody would have the day off. And then at some point they changed it and now it's like every five years. So next year, 2025, we should have the day off again. So, which is going to be on a Monday. So, yeah, that's nice. And today is Sunday. So. so, I called my brother and I said, and so he was a little surprised. He said, I'm watching Formula One. I said, oh, I said, well, I go, you know, go on watching. So, why did you call? I said, well, it's May 5th. You know, we used to get together. At May 5th. Oh yeah, now that you're saying so. And that's the thing that I'm slowly getting used to. And it, it may seem very... Um, horrific is not the word. And it's also not too black and white. But it feels like my family is no longer there. So... Well, my, of course, my mom and dad are gone. I don't have any children. Um, I do see my brother occasionally. And when I see him, I every once in a while see his kids too. And of course, his wife. Uh, I don't see my sister anymore and her daughter, which I totally regret. I do have contact with my um, former brother-in-law. But that's about it, you know, and it's weird if you think about it. So, yeah, I, I do feel a little bit alone, <laughs> I'll honestly say so. But fortunately, I also have a lot of friends and they have kids and, you know, it's, it's not that I am alone. And sometimes I need to remind myself like, hey, things may have changed, but you know, there's a way to cope and deal with it. I can say, and I'm very happy about this, and this may sound a little bit weird, uh, I'm finally capable of getting rid of some stuff, stuff that never was mine, but I got, I got it here in my place to remember my mom and dad as if I could forget them. I can't. Um, but it's time to sort out what used to be me, so that can move to what was theirs and I'm not interested in, can move to um, what I would want to keep. But because my brother did some reconstruction on the house, there's a lot of uh, wood chips. It's not that they're, it, it's really fine dust, you can't see it. But it's there and I'm very allergic to the dust which is related to, to wood chips and all that stuff. So I need to throw that away too. And then slowly it's going to be normalized over here again. And I'm looking forward to that. Now, of course, I do have my challenges. I'm human after all. <laughs> and one of the things is I... I really want to build some more stuff with Lego. And I saw this coach, this tour bus that I can open up. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because then I'm thinking about the project that I have in mind. And the next thing I think is, yeah, that's nice that you want to do it. But isn't it time that you go work on the real stuff to get that out there? And I'm like, yeah. Mm. But the question, of course, is what's relaxation and what's not? Well, I don't know how you feel about change, but I hope I've given you something to consider first time around. Usually it's hard, second time around it gets easier. If you can prepare yourself, it makes all the difference. Take some time out before you fully immerse yourself into it. Um, don't wait <laughs> until it's the next time around to do it again. I know I I waited with looking at certain things, but that's because there's so much offered all the time. Is that an excuse? 
I guess I'm using it as as an excuse. Is it a good excuse? Well, no, because if I would have used it, it probably would have helped me move forward a little bit quicker. But you know, um, what's out there? What can you use? What can you listen to? What calms you down? What helps you relax? And what are the things, the little gems, the little pearls out there, which can help you move forward? If you were to look at the changes that you've experienced and which actually did work for you well let me know and remember there is going to be a link pretty soon here for pdfs if you want to know more about change and how to deal with it and at the end of the month i'll say it now we're going to have the change challenge oh that sounds cool the change challenge i like it so it's going to be about change, uh, chaos or challenge. 